Hello. If I can see people hopping in, I'll try my best to engage, but I'm going to go ahead and just do the live video. And before I join you, I'm just going to go set my Instapod right. Be with you in a minute. Welcome to my kitchen this morning. So this is the process that I've been starting with, you know, trying to do as many videos as possible as and when I get a chance to do it. And uh, today I'm actually making sambar and this is uh, something that I'm making for my kids' lunches. So hopefully it gets done in the time that it needs to. But I thought it would be nice to record a live video of this particular dish that I have been making pretty much all my life. And it's, it's like the backbone of my kitchen because if I make one batch of this, like this, like today, this will actually hold me through all the way through the week because my kids use it as a, a sauce to dip in for dosas and idlis. And this is a recipe that has actually culminated from all the techniques that I have learned uh, from my basics, from my mom, from my grandmother, from my mother-in-law, and pretty much me trying to just mix a few things together and trying different combinations and coming up with something that's um, as close to the authentic, as close as it can get, because I can't take credit for being authentic. Um, it's all about the taste. And just trying to find ingredients that are locally available and nothing, you know, too fancy. Though I have to say that you definitely need use of an Instapot to pressure cook your lentils, because that's the key cincher. The rest of the ingredients and the rest of the equipment that we use in this recipe are very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into uh, the demo. So I, as you see with me, I have this whole setup and today I'm using my first um, tripod setup, like an actual tripod setup that's like secure and don't, doesn't shake and everything and I'd be able to swivel my camera from one view to the other view of the kitchen and uh, it looks secure as far as I'm concerned and just hoping it stays that way. Okay, so let's get back to the ingredients. So I'm gonna, I will have a recipe uploaded on my blog or probably on my Cosina page at some point, but I do have a recipe for sambar powder on my blog. So this recipe is already online, so I can definitely post that and share. So this is my home blend for sambar powder. And uh, quick history before we get into it. Now, what is sambar? Sambar basically is a nice thick sauce made with a base of lentils, um, cooked lentils, tamarind, and vegetables that you know go right well with the dish. And it's there's different versions of it in all over India. And we're gonna start with onions, that's the basic, and then we have, we have one plum tomato. And this is about uh, 50 grams of uh, tamarind that basically comes in a pod form. And I have soaked it up in a little bit of warm water to remove its pulp. And that I will proceed to do once I set my skillet up. And then there's another ingredient that I put into my sambar to give flavor, and that is drumsticks. These are frozen drumsticks, and you might as well procure them from any Indian store, and you get them in a frozen bag, and these actually lend an extra flavor into the sambar, which takes the authenticity to a little level. So these are the vegetables, technically, that go into the sambar, and the other ingredients that will be going into it will be two pinches of asafoetida, if you don't have access to this, you can completely skip it. It won't alter the taste of the sambar, but if you do have it, it will enhance it just a little bit. Turmeric, that's my sambar powder blend that I showed just a minute ago. And this is the cincher that I found that actually like, you know, takes the color of the sambar to the different level. This is Kashmiri red chili powder. In absence of Kashmiri red chili powder, you're more than welcome to use paprika, which also gives color. But with Kashmiri red chili powder, not only does it give you color, it also gives you a slight kick. I do have chilies in my blend also, but just not enough because my kids like it semi-spicy, not too spicy, but not too mild. So I like to kick it up a little notch with Kashmiri red chili powder. And of course there's salt, and I has mentioned before, 50 grams of uh, tamarind. I'm saying 50 grams, if you get seedless tam, this is seeded tamarind, so 50 grams. So I'm accounting for at least one gram of seeds and pulp that comes out. But if you have access to the seedless variety, the one that doesn't have too much of pulp and seed, you can um, definitely use a little less quantity. So I would suggest using about 40, I would say 35 to 40 grams of seedless, less pulp tamarind. So, so this tamarind actually comes in a really hard block. So it needs a little extra time. So I took the liberty of soaking it just a few minutes before I started my video. 
and uh, if you are at, if you don't have access to either of this and you actually get tamarind paste just be careful because there's actually one tamarind paste which is like extremely brown in color comes in a little plastic jar that is a very very high thick concentrate so definitely procuring actual tamarind slabs is recommended please do not use one of those little concentrates that you actually get in the store sorry you do have an audience <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right by the side of the camera and I'm going to swivel it up to my skillet and we're going to go ahead and start watching the next part of this. Alrighty, here comes the new tripod. I guess there's no focus actions, but yes. So I have with me a heavy bottomed uh, skillet. It's a, just a little pan. It needs to be a little deep. You definitely need something with a little depth in it and you need something heavy. Now, I'm trying to use this pan because I know a lot of people don't have access, don't have access to one of those little round bottom woks called a kadai. So I want to make sure that this uh, technique and recipe is accessible, not just to people with the right equipment, but you know, you can use what you have, but you definitely need something heavy. Um, if you have a cast iron, I wouldn't recommend it because we're putting tomatoes in it. Tomatoes actually react with the iron in cast iron and it does something to the, iron, the cast iron pot itself. And it can also change the flavor of the sambar. So I would definitely not recommend using that. It's something about the acidity and the iron in cast iron. So definitely don't use a cast iron. So I just recommend a skillet. If you don't have a heavy bottom skillet, a light one will do too. So it's fine. So no restrictions. So I'm going to start by turning on my flame to a little bit between high and medium. Medium high, that's my standard for all my cooking. And I'm going to measure out exactly one teaspoon of cooking oil. And while that gets hot, I'm going to go over to my range, uh, my island, sorry, not my range, I'm, I'm at my range, and I'm going to toss in that whole red onion that I have diced. So the onions are actually going to form the basic flavor component for this. And the second basic flavor component for this would be the drumsticks. Now drumsticks are very interesting, kind of like, you know, kind of like an artichoke so you basically pull the skin out and then you eat it and if you don't like it then you just discard it but it gives an extremely authentic flavor to sambar so i'm just going to add that in there and while that works i'm going to put my tomatoes into the same bowl and we use my fingers now you can use tomato puree or paste as well so the paste actually you have to just be careful you have to make sure that you go online and check what the measurements for tomato paste is i'd say approximately uh two teaspoons of tomato paste would comprise of one plum tomato and if you're using the canned variety i would definitely recommend about i'd say about a tablespoon and a half of the thick chunky tomatoes so i'm going to just take my hands i'm just going to give the tomatoes a little squish and if you turn up your speakers you probably will hear the sizzle of the onions you're good, you just leave it right in there because we just need them to saute for about two minutes or so before we start the next step. So I'm just crushing up my tomatoes, just giving them a little smush. So some of the pulp comes out, some of the juice comes out and it looks something like this. These are gonna complement the tamarind. And the tamarind um, has a very sharp tart flavor. So the, ta the tomatoes are going to help cut the tartness and also give a nice pretty little red color to uh, the sambar. So here we have all our ingredients all ready. So before I work with the tamarind, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my um, strainers because this actually helps take out all the debris from your tamarind with cheese. So while that is sizzling, into it will go three pinches of asafoetida. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get one four teaspoon of turmeric powder just in there no fancy footwork hand work and no ingredients that are inaccessible if you don't have access to drumsticks don't worry about it just stick with the onions and the tomatoes and you'll still be okay give a little quick stir the onions will break up in the pot as the sauce thickens I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomatoes into it. Watch out for splatter. If you have a splatter sheet with handy, use it. All right, now comes the part where we extract the pulp from the tamarind. So I'm gonna do it. So back home, when they weren't strainers or anything modern, moms, grandmas, they used 
their own strainers, which would be their hands. So basically they use their hands just slightly and they would catch the pulp. But very much time has passed right now. So here we have, you know, semi-modern kitchens. So yes, I have my nice little strainer. What I like to do is just to kind of control how much tamarind goes into this. There we go. Extract and toss. I'm going to pour all of that in there so I can extract as much pulp as possible without any of that debris coming in. And if, if, if some debris does fall into the somewhere, don't get, you know, fl flustered because all that goodness is actually going to lend whatever flavor it needs to to the sambar. And there's always, you know, chance of reuse. If you end up having all that um, pulp with you, you can actually reuse. So what usually ends up happening, at least if they're cooking a full South Indian meal, is that the leftover tamarind is saved for another dish. And another thing I always teach in my cooking classes, especially for kids and stuff, is that you know keep cleaning up as and when you're cooking. I'm gonna save my tamarind for use. So what I also like to do is, I like to squeeze out some more tamarind juice and then put it in a little baggie and stick it into the freezer. And then the next time I'm making sambar, I have some extra tamarind to spare. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some water and I'm gonna measure out at this point, since no cup measures you see, if I can locate it. Oh, I did, it's right here. So I'm gonna measure out two cups of water. Pour it right in. So what we're trying to achieve right now is we are boiling the raw tamarind down until it loses its, you know, kind of like um, in, in Hindi we say kacha and then um, in Tamil we say, we don't actually have a word for that, I would say a raw, it's basically the raw taste. So what you're going to do is just give it a nice little stir and this is the point where we start the little bit of seasoning. So I'm going to start with about half a teaspoon of salt. It's going to start, it'll kick up the boiling, uh, boiling up a little bit. And as that commences, I'm going to get the rest of my spices out. I'm going to start by adding one heaped teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder. I see some more familiar faces are joining me today. Hello. Shanti, hi. <laughs> okay, let's start with the sambar powder. Now, sambar powder has a little bit of roasted lentils, like the tur dal, and uh, inside it, roasted. So that actually helps give that little thickness to the dish. So go easy when you're doing it. So make sure that your flame isn't like super high bubbly. And keep your uh, spatula or ladle handy because you're going to do a little bit of stirring right now. Some arm workout. As you can see, I'm in my water workout clothes because the plan is to finish this lunch, serve it, and hit the treadmill before I come back to make lunches for me and my husband. We had late breakfast today, so we have some time. So one heaped teaspoon, the second heaped teaspoon, third heaped teaspoon, and a fourth. So be generous with your heaped teaspoons. And if you get a chance to actually see my recipe for the sambar powder, uh, it's really mild on the chilies. And if you want to have a spicier, Kick, add one more spoon of chili powder to it. It's totally up to you. We're gonna use our spatula and start stirring. And as you can see, the color of the sambar is already changing, but we're far from over. Watch out for lumps. Make sure you break those apart. If you follow my recipe for the sambar powder, you will get a lump-free uh, consistency out here because I'm very careful uh, when it comes to thickening agents in any of my foods. The sambar recipe I've been making for quite some time, but it's taken me years to actually get into a taste like right the last couple of weeks actually I've been making this and my kids have been saying, hey mom, it's actually not bad, especially my teenager. Of course, they don't have a choice. They have to eat whatever I cook, but all right. As I had mentioned, keep putting things away. Keep only what you need. 
sorry. You get view of me shoving things inside my spice cabinet. Oh, that doesn't go there. <sighs> so the only thing that I'm gonna need after this step would be salt for adjusting, some more water to adjust again, keep a cup measure, keep a cutting board handy, never hurts. I always have a tissue paper so that you can keep wiping your spaces as you go and then yeah, I have a little trouble uh, finishing dal in my Insta part. So sometimes I have to do it in two parts because I'm always in a rush and then I don't wait and I put too much water or something. So you know what? Even the best of chefs, they mess up in the kitchen. So we just need to find a solution. So as you can see from your view, the sambar has started bubbling. Yep, I think you can see it. Yeah, there we go. I think this is good enough view. So the sambar has started cooking and I can actually feel all the flavors getting right up into the kitchen air. And we're gonna let it bubble. It's almost like my little witch's cauldron it's brewing. And keep going. I have five minutes left on my steamer for my for my dal. So when you cook your uh, lentils in your insta pot or your pressure cooker, so the texture you're gonna need is not a completely like smooth mush. You're gonna have to have a few chunks of lentils still there intact, and um, it's, 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 it's something that lends a little more texture to the, to the sambar. And sambar, as, as far as my kitchen, my traditions, and the way I learned is concerned, is not a thin liquid, like you know the kind you get in restaurants and stuff like that, where it's like literally like a soup. That's, that's basically them adding water to make more quantity. You need to have it thick enough that it can actually mix up with nice um, bowl of rice, and not, it, it needs to clump up. If it doesn't clump up and it's like runny, that's not a good sambar. So just remember, the key ingredients is to always use fresh stuff. Try to make your own powder, but if you are using store-bought powder, use it very sparingly and try it a couple of times before you get it right. And um, yeah, but it's actually pretty comparatively easy to actually make your own sambar powder at home. So your ingredients are very basic. So I'm just talking while we are getting this uh, progressed. So basic ingredients for your sambar powder are tiny little bit of rice, you can use basmati rice, whatever rice you have, you know, sitting in your pantry. And then it's uh, coriander seeds. It's red chilies, huge red chilies, and um, a little bit of lentils. So what ends up happening is everybody says you need to use this kind of lentil. Only this lentil goes into it. Honestly speaking, I feel that lentils, but you know, they're pretty much uh, generic. It's just that they have different textures. But when they roast and they grind, uh, they pretty much, you know. Are the same because they don't really have a flavor of their own they just you know absorb whatever flavor that you're putting into it so i say tur dal because tur dal is always there tur dal is in here so it makes sense but if you only happen to have yellow moong dal or chana dal urad dal may not work um it's more of like a tempering uh dal but then use a tur dal it's perfect and that's pretty much it all right so now we've reached a little bubbly cooking consistency and once it gets a little thick i like to thin it out just a tiny little bit with a half cup of water when i write my recipe down i'm actually gonna have to watch this video because the way i learned how to make sambar was without measuring cups or measuring spoons i have a spoon but i wasn't measuring you know i was just like loping things in so a lot of my uh, training, self-training for cooking uh, has come from learning from people. But then when I was actually experimenting it, it was basically, we call it as eyeballing and andaze say, you know, just throw in. And there's a term that, you know, is very, very common from where I come from, is that the taste of the sambar depends on the flavor that the cook has in her hands, because we use our hands for everything, you know, to, to mix the tamarind, to crush the vegetables, to get it, to cut it. Um, so it's it's the flavor of your hands basically I don't know I mean I guess it's, it sounds kind of disgusting but then it's not because it's a uh, it's traditional it's something that we talk about you know so if somebody enjoys your food and you've actually prepared it from scratch with love they'll actually say that you know the flavor of your hands so we call it kaimana in Tamil so it, it's it, it, it shows in your food so basically it's like you know you put your soul into it and if you're in a good in, in your mood of course you need to be in a good mood when you cook because when you're in a bad mood, you're gonna mess right up. But, all right. So now we're reaching the next step of our sambal, where we're gonna let this thicken. Now 
I'll just show you a little bit of the textures that are in here. Be careful with the spoon. Yep. So the onion is par cooked. It just needs to cook slightly more. And now is a good time to actually do a little taste testing. So let me get my tasting molds out. I have these teeny tiny little cute, cute little, you know, katoras that I use for my tasting. So I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of that. So another story from where I come from is I knew my grandma and um, I'm not, not one of my grandmas. One of my grandmas didn't do it. And people that they, you know, that, that, that we are related to, uh, they actually cooked without even tasting. They just knew how much salt to put, how much ingredients to go into it. But then you know what? We work very hard to make this food because this is pretty much it for the day. So tasting is important. It's an important part of my kitchen. And I say, yeah, taste it, but do it safely. So I put only half teaspoon of salt in this. And my dal already has salt. So it's always, you know, prudent to go easy on it. So I'm going to just start with again putting another half teaspoon of salt because I feel that my sambar needs it. A little stir. Keep all my things ready. And while we wait for this to bubble, we're going to get another bunch of ingredients ready for the tempering and for the finish. So I'll be back. Just give me a second. So now we're ready with our next assembly. That's why I said the cutting board is handy. So we're going to need about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are curry leaves, so eight curry leaves. And this is a this is like about three sprigs of cilantro. So what I like to do is I, I like to conserve my curry leaves. I don't like wasting them. And so what I like to do is either you tear them up with your hands or you can cut them. So tearing does give a nice little thing. And what tearing also does is that it gives the flavors a little chance to marry when you do your tempering. So I keep my torn curry leaves. And as a child, I've always eaten my curry leaves because they're actually pretty good for you. And just chop up your uh, cilantro, rough chop, fine chop, doesn't make a difference. Because this is going to give that final flavor to your to finish. So I'm gonna go ahead to my pantry. You're gonna get a little block on the kitchen, uh, the frame. And I'm gonna grab two more ingredients that are very important. Three ingredients actually are very important to tempering of the samba. I actually have a video, I think. I might have a video of tempering, but you know, you're gonna see it here anyway. So we're gonna start by putting these things together. I'm gonna to put them on a plate so you can see. And for that, you're going to need another spoon. if I could find my little ones. Oh, uh, no, nope. it looks like my little spoons are missing. I'm just gonna go ahead and get what I do my little spoons for this. All right, so we're gonna start with placing about one fourth, not even one fourth, like literally like even less than one fourth teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. So these are methi or fenugreek seeds. Right on one side. And then these are black mustard seeds. You're going to need a half a teaspoon. Yeah, don't put too much mustard seeds into your tadka because it does tend to make your sambar a little bit bitter and it doesn't really look attractive. You put like gobs and gobs of you know mustard seeds into your tadka. And then you're going to need the same amount of white mustard. Uh, this is white lentils, not mustard. I keep having mustard in my head. So half a spoon of white lentils. These are like urad dal. I have the split ones, those are the best, they actually look pretty. So the urad dal basically when it smokes up in the oil, it gives a nice little um, smoky flavor to your tadka. And that's your trinity of sambar tadka, keep it. Don't worry about all of them mixing around together because they will move around. 
And so that's pretty much it. And then the other ingredient you're gonna to need to flavor your sambar would be your asafoetida. I'm gonna put two pinches of that. And if you don't have access to this one, get with this one little tool that I have in my kitchen. Don't worry about it. You can also use um, a, ladle, a ladle that's um, friendly to your kitchen. So you can even do the tarka in a ladle. That's what they used to do back then, put it right in there. Or I have something called as a tiny little skillet. So there's another tip I can give you, which you can use for tarka, but you have to be very careful with your heat when it comes to that one. Let me see if I can locate it. Yep, I found it. So if you don't have access to an Indian uh, skillet, you can use one of these. These are like one egg pans. So they're the right size. Look at that, look how similar they look. So you can actually get one of these online and they're basically to cook like one fried egg. So you can definitely use this, but it's a very lightweight one. So when you're actually using it for tarka, just be careful about your heat calibration. So go easy on it because it heats up really quickly and it's nonstick. So make sure that your heat's not too high that you burn the coating and the layers. Okay, good. Pause you guys just for one second. All right, I'm back. So while I was chit chatting, the dish is actually progressing. And now would be a good time to do a second taste test to see if the tamarind has actually lost its raw flavor. It's definitely gotten a bit thicker. Yep, we're getting there. I need a little bit more salt in mine. So I'd rather have a teaspoon of salt goes in here. And keep an eye on this, I'll be back. So while we were chit chatting, I had a chance to make sure that my dal gets nicely cooked. So I have with me fresh uh, cooked lentils. I had to soak them in a little bit of water. So as you can see, can you see the texture? There's still a little bit of like graininess to it. You don't want it to be too smooth or too mushy. That was a good time to start adjusting my sambar. Oh, looks like my ladle came handy. So I have with me a little bit of the lentils that have been cooked and again it's like a little watery texture. So you don't have to separate the, the lentils, um, water and the lentils like I have. This is just my little thing that happened. But you're more than welcome to just take the whole thing and just dump it all into the sambar. So I'm just going to mix that up a little. Set with my spoon. Now lower your heat to low when you're doing this because you don't want splash all over you. So I'm going to start with the liquidy part of my dal. Scoop all of that. This one has some of the dal that's got that nice little grainy texture. And then go ahead and put all of that. So approximately, if you measure out one full cup of lentils uh, to cook for this dish, you will have about, I would say about two full cups or two and a half cups of cooked lentils. I would not recommend you using any other dal, like masoor dal or moong dal. Moong dal cooks a little quickly. You can use it if it's an emergency and you don't have access to any other dal in your house. Don't use masoor dal because my grandmother actually taught me and then she actually was right because masoor dal actually gets, sambar that made in masoor dal actually will spoil in like two days. And you want this dal to, you know, you want the sambar to last. For me, it has to last at least uh, five to six days because it's used as an item for our dinner, sometimes for our breakfast, for our lunches. Yes, and as usual, I need my tissue paper to keep cleaning up the range. So now, before you mix all that lentils in, one more cup of water. Do that final little finish before we do the, the tempering. So this will help thicken, give a little bit more volume to your sambar. So just mix. Make sure all of it is combined well. Stir and stir. So if anybody else is hopping on just, you know, a little late into the live, so we're making um, my version of sambar, which is traditional from where, where I come from. So now that we've mixed all these things together, a little bit of the spill on the side of my thing. I don't want to burn in my kitchen. And I think my little 
monkeys are getting hungry so i have to speed this up a little i'm gonna try my best so crank up your heat give it about let's say about two minutes to come to a nice little boil another time to do a taste test <laughs> because we had salt added into the lentils when i cooked it so lots of adjusting that takes place now what i'm going to do i'm going to rinse out my little tasting cup just so that it doesn't interfere with this round of tasting so taste more of that in there i think it's perfect no additions of any sort required. And oh yes, I forgot the totally most important ingredient in your temporary is cooking oil, which I you know, didn't really let leave my side here. So it's right here. So I'm gonna put my salt into the sink because I don't need it anymore. And, uh, so there's another technique for your tempering or tarka that I have been hearing that uh, on food forums and groups is that you use ghee as a tarka for this. Well, where I come from, traditionally, ghee is just used as something that we flavor the rice with, but not exactly a tarka. But then if you're keen and experiment, experimental, go right ahead and use uh, ghee for your for your tempering your tarka. But I'm going to stick with just good old uh, corn oil, which I use for my cooking anyway. So if you can, you know, spot from there, my sambar has already started bubbling. Just a teeny tiny little bit. It's basically the dal and the sambar mix getting cooked. And I'm going to let that go ahead and cook and I'm going to change my focus of my tripod to go to the edge where as you can see that little edge right there mm -hmm. yeah okay I need to work on my directions there <laughs> I try to focus on that. So that little tiny little burner so I have my little tarka pan and I'm going to place it so it's really nice that you know you can actually like time all the stuff to like synchronize if you can, great. If not, this is like routine for me, but if you can't, then just, you know, go easy. If you want to just wait for this to finish cooking before you do the tempering, you're more than welcome. So I have that on in my medium high heat. I'm going to measure out one and a half teaspoon of oil. This is like a half teaspoon uh, spoon. So I'm going to do one and a half. Be careful for heat and splatter. And we're going to let the oil heat up for just about a minute. And while that heats up, the sambar can get a little bit of a stir. So when I post the recorded version of the live, you're more than welcome to watch that. Uh, post any kind of comments or suggestions or I don't know, like, you know, I'll try to see if I can actually, you know, meet, meet those requirements. But this is just a cook along. This is not one of those little fancy videos where everything is like edited and everything is, you know, choreographed. Um, I'm still new to the video blogging game. so. Yep, until I get my finesse. You're gonna be stuck with watching these kind of videos of me like peeking in like the talk and stuff because I'm still working on camera angles and I have to work for tripod setups. Today was not a day to set up the tripod. My kitchen's already a little bit of a, it's not that bad actually, uh, of a mess <laughs> this Saturday morning. So 30 seconds are gone. We have another 30 seconds left. So we don't have to wait until those 30 seconds. The heat, the oil is hot. You start with putting just the fenugreek or the methi seeds in, okay? They'll start uh, sizzling right there in front of you. And then follow by putting the lentils. And by now, the seeds are already like sizzling. So I'm gonna take all my uh, mustard seeds and put it in. So all your tarka ingredients are in, okay? Get your curry leaves ready. Your torn curry leaves, cut curry leaves whichever way you look at it, you're going to take it and we're going to wait for the first mustard seed to pop. And it did. So as soon as the popping starts, crank your heat down low for the tarka and you're going to take all your curry leaves and put it and it's going to pop right all over the place. And while they're doing that popping, you take your asafoetida. I put about two to three pinches. One, two and three. And I just give it a little stir. Yep. I'm gonna change the view of my camera again. Here we go. So the tarka is kind of done. We're gonna turn it off, and then you take your tarka ban. 
toss it right into the sambar. And this is a trick, you have to do this. Maximize all that tempering from that little skillet and get it out. Make sure the thing doesn't touch the bottom, otherwise your non-stick pan can scratch. Find a heat safe uh, environment in your sink, pour that right in. Get your tabka to mix with your sambar nicely. And then the final finish is the chopped karidi, uh, cilantro leaves. Curry is on my mind. <laughs> you just pour that in. It's nice and flavorful. And you're going to give that a stir again. And once you've finished this, I would highly recommend. That once you finish cooking your sambar, I highly recommend that you turn off your heat, take a lid, close it, and just let your sambar sit on the range just until you're ready to cook. Because what it ends up happening is that you have all the flavors that are in here. They get trapped, they get melted, the sambar gets this thing. And here's another key about sambar. Sambar actually tastes good the next day. It's one of those dishes which uh, the longer it sits as a leftover, tastes way better the next day because all the flavors and all the ingredients that you put into it Get, uh, get nice and uh, squished up. And then I think it also kind of lets out, it's got lentils, right? So in the fridge, I think there's a little bit of fermentation that happens. So it cooks in a little bit more and then it tastes better. So sambar actually is one of the best leftover foods. Have it the next day, again, with your dosas, your idlis, with your rice. And uh, my husband and I are on a new diet. So as you can see, most of my posts on my Facebook and my Instagram have all been about my journey. As you can see, I'm still in my, I'm in my workout clothes because I'm gonna, Get everybody to eat lunch right now and i'm going to be doing a lunchtime treadmill or workout in my basement and that's all you know new starts new everything new me new world so yeah so this is my sambar recipe so i'm going to post this live uh, as a recorded thing right on the facebook page so that you guys can see it anytime i'll have it on my cocina page as well and uh, it was nice to have a live this morning it was completely impromptu uh thought of it spur of the moment it was a nice way for me to test my camera uh, tripod, which actually is not that bad. It was easy to shift the angles and stuff without shaking it too much. And you're able to get views of my prep station and my gas station. So everything's a work in the progress. So, you know, this is this is me completely uncut, just the way I am with absolutely no frills. No frou-frou as I call it. And yeah, so here's my sambar. And I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of my lunch because I have hungry people waiting.